Hey guys, my name is Jose and today I want to keep talking to you about the character generator I showed you in my first video. Since my last video, I've made a few changes that have greatly improved the generator's use. One of the things I made was a template file that allows you to load a default character. When you open Blender, if you look off to the side on the splash screen, it now says Convoco character. This is what I've titled the character generator. I've also created some workspaces for each phase of creating a character. The first workspace is meant to be seen as a character profile. It lets you see what the character looks like. It also provides space for you to document the character's biography, stats, power, and inventory. I think keeping record of these details is a good way to track the character's development over time. Hopefully, it will help me keep the story consistent. The second workspace focuses more on the form of the character. This is primarily what I talked about in the first video. You can change the character's shape by modifying their proportion or silhouette. I added icons to the different silhouette controls to keep them a bit more organized. It was hard to tell them apart because they all looked the same. But I think that the most significant change I made was adding face controls. The face rig allows you to change the shape and size of different facial features like the nose or the mouth or the eyes. Being able to control the proportions of each character's face gives the characters a lot of personality and it makes them unique. The next workspace is pretty simple. It's just called config. Basically, this workspace allows me to edit the rig or edit the mesh, do weight painting or vertex painting or whatever it is that I need to do without messing up any of the other workspace layouts. So yeah, like I said, pretty simple. And that, for the most part, covers all of the changes that I've made. In the last video, I talked about how the grease pencil could be used to draw over the geometry of the proxy character. Using different projection methods, I was able to create pretty neat designs if I used the proxy mesh as a reference. After a bit of experimentation and some research, I think I am close to mastering the grease pencil technique. The end result is a lot like a moving sketch of the character, and I'm super stoked with the way the character turned out. After creating the Convoco template, I realized that leaving it blank didn't do a good job of showing off how it's supposed to be used. So I decided to create a default character that loads with the Convoco generator every single time you open it. I decided to create an ordinary villager. The first thing I did was draw a concept for the default character. I'm using a reference I drew a while back when making an earlier version of the Convoco generator. The grease pencil layers are really neat to work with for this kind of thing because you can draw multiple designs on separate layers, or in this case, you can separate overlapping parts of your design to stay organized. Another useful feature is the grease pencil modifiers. For example, here I am using the mirror modifier. And what's really neat is that you can choose which material or which grease pencil layer you want the modifier to influence. It just gives you control in a lot of different ways. The proportions the reference character had weren't really what I was looking for. The head was a little too big, so in edit mode I scaled some of the character features until they were closer to what I needed. One of the things I noticed is that each time I went back to refine what I had drawn, the concept changed a great deal. And it's something that I see happen throughout each phase of this process. I think this sort of approach is very intuitive because it builds on your ideas in iterations. Each time you refine your ideas, you are not only cleaning them up, but you are also able to change them and hopefully improve them. Anyways. Once I finished drawing out the character design, I started using the scale controls to change the shape of my character. I did my best to match the character's shape to the reference behind him. Using both the proportion controls and the silhouette sliders together proved to be really effective. They gave me a lot of control, more than I expected, and I actually didn't do too bad of a job of matching up the character with the original design. Using these controls, it's not always possible to get a 100% match, but that is okay, as long as I can get the general idea across. I think that's what's important at this point in the process. 
I also think it offers an opportunity for iteration, kind of like mutations in the character design. Like I said earlier, one of the updates I made was adding in a face control. So now you can edit the shape of the facial features and move them around to stylize your characters and offer even more variety. Changing their face shapes gives them a lot of personality. That's where you really start to get a unique character. And so here, I've finished matching up the proxy to the character design, and I'm just moving him around a bit to show that you can animate and pose this character even after you've changed the proportions and modified the silhouette. Now that I have the character's proportions the way that I want them, I decided to block in the character's clothing using a subdivided cube. These forms will help me with the placement of strokes once I start drawing. Here, I have another chance to iterate on the concept. Once I started blocking things out using the subdivided cubes, I decided to give the character pants because it would make the silhouette more interesting. Working like this allows you to layer your approach and revise your work as you go. As I was doing this, I began asking myself if this was all really an efficient way of working because I basically modeled the clothing over the character using geometry and now I'm going to trace over that geometry using the grease pencil. It feels like I could model everything out of geometry from the start instead of taking this approach. But I also feel like you're able to get a lot of detail very quickly with the grease pencil that you can't get with geometry. So I don't know, let me know what you think in the comments down below. So now that I've finished blocking in all of the shapes, I started tracing over them with the grease pencil. I started first with the hair. I remember in the last video I said that the hair was going to be one of the things I struggled with the most, but it actually wasn't as difficult as I thought it was going to be. The guides I set up in the previous step made it very easy to draw out the shapes I wanted. After seeing how quickly I was able to draw out my concept and how detailed I could get with the grease pencil, taking this sort of approach made a little more sense. Taking this approach also allowed for yet another iteration to the character design. The original character concept didn't have these finer details. It was very basic in its shapes. Tracing over the forms I made gave me a chance to add in smaller details. I think it's really neat to see how the character design evolves in each phase as a result of this approach. I'm trying to be pretty decorative with this part of the design because there's a lot of open space. Filling it up makes the silhouette of the design stronger. I didn't actually do anything with the hands in the character design. But when I was drawing the design over the geometry, I drew little dots on both hands so that the grease pencil layer wouldn't be blank. It's also to let me know if the layer is parented to the bones properly. I'm making sure to switch to a separate layer for different parts of the design. Different features belong to a different layer, and then those layers will be parented to the corresponding bones. For something like the legs, because they were so simple, it got very difficult to see the general silhouette. So I did have to draw in profile lines to help define those boundaries a bit more. Perhaps filling in these shapes with color will help create that separation. But I think adding color is something that I'll do later on. So the character is mostly done, but he's still missing his face. I cheated and just copied the strokes from the reference object. Using edit mode, I nudged all the strokes into place. I also added a mirror modifier so I would only have to do one side of the face and save myself a bit of work. Using proportional editing was really useful. It allowed me to move the strokes with the soft fall off, making it super easy to edit the grease pencil strokes. I did my best to nudge all of the strokes into place, keeping in mind their form in 3D space. After I had finished the mouth, I continued to work on the eyes, shaping them until they fit nicely inside the character's eye sockets. After that, all that was left for me to do was the eyebrows. Honestly, I probably would have had a much easier time just drawing them directly onto the geometry. 
I guess I'll have to remember that for next time. Once again, I was sure to separate each of the individual features onto separate grease pencil layers. Once that was finished, I needed to merge the face and the character design into a single object. Now, I needed to parent each layer to the correct bone. Under the Layers section in the Object Properties tab, you'll find another section titled Relations. Here you can tell Blender which object or bone you would like the grease pencil strokes to follow. Once this was done, I was able to pose my character and the design followed with the armature transformations. While it's not perfect, I am super stoked with how the character turned out, and I am also excited to continue working with the Convoco generator. I would definitely count this as a win for me. Well, dang, that was a lot longer than I expected. If you made it this far, congrats, you're still in the running to being America's Next Top Modeler. I hope you enjoyed watching this video. If you guys are working on any cool stories or projects, let me know in the comments below. I would love to hear about them. I'm going to be rebuilding the character generator in the near future. There are still a lot of things that I need to improve on and polish. If there is something you think I should focus on specifically, let me know and I can give it some thought. If you want to see more of the work I'm doing, be sure to like and subscribe and I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.